Welcome to Dorsta! I'm Ramajin. Today we're gonna teach you Japanese behavior in order to make Japanese friends in VR chat. Let's go! One thing I've noticed about um, Japanese groups of people is that as their conversations progress, they tend to move to a lower posture. Look over there, I found some Japanese people, and they're sitting in front of a mirror. Let's take a look. Yeah, you can see. They sit. I don't know exactly why it is, if it's just that's a relaxed way of being, like how a, um, maybe an American would spread his knees apart or open up his body, lean on something, or it could be some cultural thing where like that way nobody's above anyone else. Um, but it's, it's just something we see happen. When it comes to choosing an avatar, there's a strong trend toward, uh, kawaii style. Distinct from the sort of western style that I see, which is usually very much that shape. So I think, uh, if a Japanese man has a really deep voice, chances are his avatar has a really big chest capacity. Look at these avatars. <gasps> the circumstance in which it's okay to have your mic on is maybe a little different. For instance, it's not uncommon to see somebody in the group fall asleep and then leave his mic on. Are they sleeping in VR? <laughs> I've been woken up a couple of times when the party closed and told to take my headset off and go to bed properly. I feel like the number one most important skill when dealing with anything in Japan is understanding the context in which it's happening. I think why one will find that Japanese people ask a lot of questions like what is your age, what zodiac sign are you, something like that. They're trying to establish the context. It's really important to sense the mood in whatever group you're coming into. I think that's a critical skill, even in VR. はい、はい、はい。なんでしょう。うん、うん、何を手ますかジャストダンスの2021っていうゲームで。そうなんです。ありがとうするために踊ってます。よろしくお願いします。カメラ目線。はい、頑張ってください。はい、頑張ります。